always a privilege to come and speak at the International Leaders Summit event and to be part of what Dr. Abloy talked about, which is what needs to be an international effort to enhance the compliance with the rule of law and that fight against international, transnational crime and corruption. Eric from AT&T started us out by talking about how do you define this rule of law. Uh, people have been grappling with it for a while. They've come up actually here with, with agreement. We can all start off on the same foot that the rule of law is an ideal where government and its officials and agents, as well as individuals and private entities, are accountable under the law. The laws are clear, publicized, stable, and just and are applied evenly and protect fundamental rights, including the security of persons and property and certain core human rights. The process by which the laws are enacted, administered, and enforced is accessible, fair, and efficient, and justice is delivered timely by competent, ethical, and independent representatives and neutrals who are, who are of sufficient number, have adequate resources, and reflect the makeup of the community they serve. It sounds great, the rule of law is one of those topics, nobody's going to argue against it, but yet how do we find ourselves here where we are and the problems facing the international community, the private sector as they go to invest in different nations. And there's a, a, just a slight little deviation that takes place. Because 30 years ago, Ronald Reagan talked about tearing down the wall, focusing on the Iron Curtain in Eastern Europe, and what people thought was coming behind that with sound economic policy and with it the rule of law. But the rule of law, whether it be in Eastern Europe or Russia and other places in other countries, the rule of law can be hijacked by what now people are starting to recognize is the rule of law can be taken and it can become the rule by law. And whether it be administrative officials or judges, rule by law can be used to mask and hide and justify all sorts of acts which are then are given the color or the presumption of reliability when, and permissiveness when they shouldn't get that. And now we struggle with how do we get behind that? And how does the international legal community deal with that? That's where I can stand up and, and Joel talk about how I, I defend both uh, elected officials and private individuals, executives, corporations. I, I defend the wrongfully accused because it is amazing the number of people out there and, and the number of governments that are trying to hijack the legal system. And in an effort, if in an effort to silence political opponents or to silence competitors, to steal competitors' businesses. In some jurisdictions, it's easier to go out and bribe a local prosecutor, uh, bribe, or bribe a judge, and, and win a verdict, or have your competitor thrown in jail and prosecuted. And then you can buy the competitor out in a fraction of what the business is worth, because there may be a for this offer. You can spend the next 20 years in jail, and you can sell your company for X number of dollars. And there's a famous story about a a Russian oligarch, it's not a Kurikovsky story, uh, but who was thrown in jail and was offered X amount of money for his company, and he said no. And the authorities came back a week later and they said they offered him 10% less. And they told him they were going to keep doing that until he sold, but he wasn't going anywhere. So when they came back the next time, he sold the company and he left the country. Uh, but it was all done, and it, it was all done under the color of a lawful criminal prosecution. It was done with documents that were signed and sealed by courts uh, in Russia. And everybody thought this would, uh, the rest of the world had to live with it as a legal transaction. That's business dealings they had in other countries, that the company had in other countries had to be honored and pushed it forward. There are three examples I can talk about because, and, and that reflect the challenges that companies have. AT&T goes into a new market and has to address, and has to deal with the local authorities. Now, they have the beauty of the logo in, in so many places that, that companies, that, that governments take them seriously and have to recognize 
AT&T has the ability to go someplace else. One of the most famous stores was IKEA. That opened it opened for opened uh, four stores in Russia, and then it had a truck and had a problem with the National Gas Company with Gazprom. They accused Gazprom of shaking them down for kickbacks in order to have enough electricity to run the stores. Chairman of IKEA flew to Moscow, held a press conference, and said basically, "We're not paying the kickbacks, and either the kickbacks will stop, or in 30 days, IKEA will close down all its business in Russia and leave the country." IKEA didn't care. IKEA could do it, and miraculously, the electricity came back on, and the electric bills went back down to what other people were paying, and IKEA is still doing business there. But not everybody gets to do that. To show as to how insidious some of this can get, and the problem that's created. People are familiar with Yukos Oil Company and the battle it had with the Russian government, and the what has now been ruled on has been an expropriation by the Russian government through, a phony, through phony tax charges. But Yukos had foreign subsidiaries, and Russia, Rosneft wanted to get control of the Yukos subsidiary in Armenia. It had assets of $8 billion in cash, so it was a very attractive asset. They wanted to sell it in bankruptcy for a fraction of the $8 billion, but they couldn't get physical possession of the company, so they sued in Armenia to force Armenian management to turn over, to turn the company over. As a result of that, the Armenian government, the chairman of the Armenian subsidiary fought back. He was then charged with criminal, with violent, with, with a breach of duty, which really was just doing what they didn't want. So he had to flee the country. The case went to court anyway, and by mistake, or actually because he was applying the law, an Armenian judge ruled in favor of the Yugo subsidiary that they didn't have to turn over the documents and the seal and the governing implements to the Russian company. Well, that was not a very popular decision back in Moscow. And shortly thereafter, the judge who issued that decision was called into the chief judge's office in, in Yerevan, Armenia, and he was told on Sunday afternoon, and he was told that he was going to issue a new decision and he was handed that decision on a thumb drive, uh, and he was sent back to his office where he printed out the decision, signed it, and reversed the decision. So now ruling against you guys. Uh, but I mean, it's a tough place. After he issued that decision, he was, he was fired. His pension was terminated, and he fled the country. And I had the amazing experience that he came here, and through somebody I know, he came to us came to, to a client of mine and in connection with Yukos and told the story. And he went back to Europe and told that story. And as a result of that, the Russians were not able to rely upon this Armenian court decision that now they were taking around and saying, we have the rights to these assets, everybody has to turn them over. But it, it looked great. I mean, they're, they're, the, Russians, the Russian government there saying, this is the rule of law. You, you have to follow this. But it was totally hijacked. And thankfully, this was a judge who had, uh, had the, the strength and the fortitude and, and, and in part, the lack of any place else to go uh, to come forward and tell the truth. A piece of this is now being litigated in the D.C. court because there are issues about whether information relevant to, to the pressure put on him and the bribe put on him relates to Western entities. And there's a question as to whether the, the U.S. court will Force discovery, and we'll pull out some of the documents so we can keep track and watch uh, how this is going. 